Welcome to the It's All Fine and Danji podcast, where hosts Dan and Angie talk with creatives, small business owners, charities, and all kinds of interesting people. It's all real talk. It's all fine and dangy. Well, it has not happened again since then because we got the checklist, buddy. We're like, hit this button, hit that, hit that. Yeah, yeah we are not, uh uh-uh, it's not ever going to happen again. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the It's All Fine and Dangy podcast. Angie here. Dan here. How, how do we say that? Because it's fine that. and dangy. We don't do that. We Remember <laughs> one time I did one, and this is, I said I'm from a pop guy when I say member. 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 <laughs> member but, win. But uh, you, I go. I'm Dan, and you didn't say anything. <laughs> <Is that, laughs> I go, and she's Angie, and I'm never doing this again. But it's because it's called. It's all fine and Angie. So your name is first. So I don't ever feel like I should say my name first for some we, reason. We could try it the other way around. It would be like, and and and. And an Anna. I, I don't even know what it would be. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us again. We love that you guys continue to tune in and listen. Um, we, You know that we love supporting small businesses. Indeed. And we have Brandon Bailey with us from Tribal Acres. Yes, guys, we have a very cool local farm right here in our neck of the well, kind of in our neck of the woods. It's in Lake County, but that's it's very you know, close. Fifteen it's like minutes a rock away. Rock throw or something, yeah. right? Yeah. So, welcome, Brandon. Thank you so much for driving all the way out here to sit with us and chat. Yes, thank you guys for having me. I'm super excited to be here. So, and it's yeah. Brandon's first podcast. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you do a YouTube channel. We're gonna put the link yes. in the show notes here, but we'll talk a little bit more about your YouTube channel. But I mentioned it early because. You're used to being in front of the camera. You're used to talking and stuff. And I think we've probably mentioned you on the show before because we were very impressed. It's funny. We went and got the meat from you. And I know you giggled because I'm like... We're trying to be good, and we just had steaks or something. I ended up leaving, <laughs> yeah. like, ended up leaving like burgers anyway. Yeah, As did. I'm walking away, I'm like, why don't I just get steaks? Yeah. <laughs> they were very good, though, but we're going to try yeah. the steaks. Oh, sure. and, yeah, yeah. and then we also got some um, salt, the salsa, too. And oh, that's we salt. Ate it We've done that twice. Like yeah, we ate it two like days, immediately. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, it's so good. So, okay. So, obviously, you guys, we're talking about meat, and, and it's a farm. So, obviously, we kind of gave a little clue there about what, what Tribal is. Acres yeah. is. But um, tell us, uh, just, you know, tell us about Tribal Acres. What uh, What is it? Yeah, so uh, we're a family-owned operated farm. So, there's 10 of us in our family, and... It's really where the name tribal came from. So we get the question all the time is like, yeah. so what Indian reservation are you guys a part of? And we're like, so we're not quite a part of an Indian reservation. Yeah. But uh, I always explain, you know, our family is what we've really built our farm around. And we consider our family our tribe. So that's where the name came from. And I love that. Yeah. why we chose that. Because, you know, it, it's not just about one of us, but it was about all of us and about sure. doing life together. So. We are a farm that raises animals. Uh, We raise currently beef, pork, chicken, duck, turkeys, and lambs. Uh, All no hormones, no antibiotics, all grass-fed. Oh, you're making me hungry. Yeah. (laughs) And and we practice regenerative practices, too, which I know we might get into a little bit later. Oh, yeah, for sure. uh, About what that is. But So that's like the basis. And then my mom and my aunt, we wanted to give them something to do because, you know, they're a little bit older and they don't want to be quite out in the heat like us, you know, dying day in and yeah, day out. neither do know? I, Brandon, neither do I. <laughs> and plus, you know, it's a lady, so my yeah. sister works outside of this, but, you know, she's still younger and likes to be outside, yeah. like with gardening and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So right, right. we ended up doing a thing where we actually did jarred items too, and it, it really complements our, our farm well. Oh, yes, of oh, course. They're so, so good. The ones, that, now we've only tried the one, but the one that I tried, the- The one um, we we're addicted to already. <laughs> what's it called? The salsa. It's It's got a little bit of a kick to it. Is it the City Slicker? No. Uh, root and tootin'? Root and tootin'. Root and tootin'. Yeah, that's that was the, the one. one. Yeah. So good. I think we eat it too fast. I don't really think you're supposed to eat it that fast, but it's good on eggs. It's, it's good oh, on It's good everything. on everything. It's almost good just to eat with a spoon, but I want to back up just a tiny bit because yeah. we want to get into you know everything you guys have, everything that you mentioned. But on your website, it says unapologetic intentional mm-hmm. farming. What does that mean? Yeah, so it means that we're unapologetic about our practices and we're also intentional about everything we do. Uh, when it comes to farming and 
You mean the regenerative? Regen- yeah. I, I can never say it. Yeah, reg- get regenerative. It. Re- regenerative. Yeah. Yes, it is a very um, tongue twistery it word. Is. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah, we have had other farms on before, and we've talked about that. How, yeah. you know, to, well, we'll go into that in a minute. Yeah. Well, but. yeah, maybe you could tell us what that means to you guys. Because we've heard of, you know, the way that you, um, you know, move the chicken so the mm-hmm. land gets a chance to recover, those kinds of things. Yeah. So the one reason why we went with that kind of, I guess you could say tagline yeah. is we wanted something to tell people that, you know, what we're doing, there's not a lot of people doing it like this, but we're unapologetic about it. And we are going to be intentional about how we raise our animals, about how we farm, um, about how, how we believe about it and what we feel like really needs to be done. And so that was like what we really wanted to emphasize. And when, when, when somebody reads like, okay, what's different about these guys, um, from, you know, the next farmer. And we wanted to have, you know, a phrase that shows like, okay, what, when they read unintentional, you know, and unapologetic, like, what does that mean? Yeah. And so we kind of try and explain it and go in depth about it. But of course it's definitely, you know, the regenerative practices and make, we're taking care of our animals or not in buildings. We don't raise anything commercially. Uh, so it's all yeah. like in quotes, pastured, you know? right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everything we raise on pasture, even, so we raise two different kinds of beef. We raise a grass finished cow, which means that they only receive grass a hundred percent of the time. And then we raise a grass fed cow too. And so most cows that are fed out are always put in a feedlot operation or in a feedlot situation. Yep. Fed that even, corn to fatten them up. Yeah. So even <laughs> the last 60, 90 days is all we do, which is like the most minimal time you can put a cow on grain to actually get some marbling back into the meat. Right. Even during that time, our cows remain on pasture. So they're never pulled to receive that kind of stress, that kind of tight quarters. They're wow. always remaining on pasture even during that time. And that's like one of the things that we're very intentional about as well is if we're going to do this for, you know, a customer that may like this over a grass finish, cause it is a different taste. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. we want to make sure we're still giving this animal, you know, exactly what it'd be experiencing on pasture, just, you know, plus, plus additive grain there for at the end. Oh, so you do yeah. add the grain at the end, but you don't, you don't put them somewhere different. Yeah. Just, so okay. they, they come to a different pasture. Um, uh-huh. but okay. just because we don't feed the rest of the herd any, anything okay. at all, but they're not been put in a building for, so grass. it's like when you see the cows that are coming to the truck that's pulling up cause yeah, they yeah. know the food is coming. Yeah. That's where those cows are kind of separated. I got you, and then the yeah. other ones are still grazing and only right, feeding on right. grass. Yeah. Like, but I guess what's really important about that is you're not putting that for that. Even at the end there, you're putting them in another pasture. It's still a pasture. They're not yeah. stressing out. Yeah. yeah. We're not putting them in tight quarters or, you know, force them to be standing in their own in their own feces, feces. On, yeah. honestly and in oh, tight we, quarters we've watched all the documentaries yeah. um, <laughs> all that stuff is like what we're trying to get away from and you, you know. may have a better idea of the science than I do but yeah. I feel I don't want to get metaphysical here but I feel like that stuff translates into the meat like the stress and the trauma and it you know what I mean it seems it does, like yeah. it yeah. seems like it would have something to do with the way the animal develops in general uh, yeah there has to be a science yeah behind it, so of course. it actually is so stress on an animal does affects it affects it meat all the way around would, um, yeah, it, it pushes so. hormones into the body back into the mm-hmm. meat and everything so that affects the animal and of course what you're eating on top of what's being pumped into the animal is also things that we wanted to get away from. So yeah, like when I we say that. no hormones, no antibiotics, we're not putting anything in the animal and we don't even really, we don't do vaccinations or anything like that either, unless it's very, very, you know, Something's life or death situation, to the rest then we don't even, even do that. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty much all natural meat yeah. is what you're getting. I yeah. When I, so I love your tagline because when I, I read it, unapologetic and intentional, what I feel is that, the unapologetic part is like, you're going to have people like, oh, you eat meat. Oh, you're yeah, cool to yeah. animal. You're always going to have those people. Yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah. you're like, yes, we eat meat. This is what we do. But we're doing it in a humane way. Yeah. And that's the intentional part. You're probably caring for those animals, kind of like they're pets on the farm yeah, and they're absolutely. getting love and pet. And you're not just looking at it as dollar sign, dollar yeah. sign. Right. Because you could, like you could technically farming. make more money by doing it conventionally, yeah, but yeah. you're not. You're, that's the regenerative part too, where you're taking care of the land and everything to make sure that you're not getting your quick buck, ruining everything, and then moving on. And I love that too. Yeah. Um, I have a, I, I, we could talk about this part all night because I hate to admit this is the this is the 
episode of the podcast to admit it most, but I could eat red meat every single night. I know we're not supposed to, but I could. It's <laughs> yeah. one I crave. It's it the does. only one I crave. Yeah. Um, is there, there's a taste difference between the, where it's finished with grain and where it's just grass fed? I didn't know that. Yeah. So there is, some people say there's more of a tad gamier taste to a grass finished beef just because it only receives, receives a natural grass. Oh, I, think I'd like yeah. I think I'd yeah. like that. I think I'd like to get I always suggest, you know, telling our customers or people in general to try both, especially if you have somebody who's offering both. Yeah, yeah. You know, why not? Sure. Yeah. So we always tell them, you know, try both and see which one you like more. And, you know, we can offer, that's why we offer both those things. That also gives, it, it is, a, you do get a few more health benefits from that kind of stuff too. So there is more things that are better for your body from that too. But from the, from the grain, from the grass mm-hmm. finish. So of course, like B vitamins. Yeah, and you get the more. Meat. There's mm-hmm. more vitamins, healthier fats in it too, because the fat's going to be more of a yellower color instead of like you know you see more of the that white, white color. For clarity, mm-hmm. are we talking about the ones that finish with grain or don't? So the ones that don't finish with grain, your fat's going to be more Think yellowy. Think of corn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Corn well, fattens that makes you up. That's, it fattens all yeah, of us right. up. And it's going to be a leaner, <laughs> leaner meat too. But that so. makes sense yeah. to yeah. me. It's because it's it's 100 percent natural all the way through. Yeah. So what I think of, so we talk about uh, like conventional farming and how you're, you're doing things the way, how farming was intended, right? Yeah, absolutely. But as you grow, as your customer base grows and that, um, the demand grows, what are your plans for keeping up with that? Or are you going, you know, are you just going to, you know, keep customers updated? Well, we, you know, our our calves haven't grown yet. Meat will be, we're expected to deliver again at a certain date. Like how, have you thought about that? Yeah. So actually we go through that all the time and Mm -hmm. still are currently going through that. Um, we just actually relocated our farm over into Lake County area about almost two months ago now. So we just give you more land or yeah. So we went from 50 acres to 140. Oh, nice. Um, Wow. So we almost tripled in size as far as land goes. Uh, but we knew we we were kind of trying to, I think, prepare even a little earlier. But we already could kind of see where things were headed for us and what we were wanting to do. And we knew we needed the space. Um, so that was the first thing we did. And then we do sell out of meat. So this past weekend, yeah. we had our our preseason burgers was pretty much all we had for sale. And mm. But we're two weeks out every week. So not every week, but we're two weeks out every time we process. So like, let's we just got our meat back from a processor today. Mm-hmm. So two weeks from now, again, we'll, we do the same thing and we'll pick up again. And then we drop off that following week to the processor. So we are on a constant rotation, mm-hmm. but like you're saying, like, what do you do? We do. Yeah. So yeah, we do run out and sell out and we are even now working on trying to keep up with demand even more. Yeah. And for some things like raising cattle, you are looking anywhere between 16 to eight. We usually run 18 months for a cow to be finished. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't have any steers ready for that, you know, it, yeah. it, it can get a little hairy there. Sure. So yeah. Yeah. So it definitely but, takes a lot of planning. Yeah. You know? I love this though. This is where I say, I feel like it's worth, and I, we have, I don't have any idea what the price of anything is, but anytime you're dealing with a situation where you're getting like prime meat that is all natural, that is raised the long way. Yeah. Um, I like how you say that though, the long way. It's worth paying Mm -hmm. extra for, because that's what we're meant to eat. I mean, my beliefs are, that's what we're meant to eat Mm -hmm. and that's how we're meant to eat it. And so sometimes the debate about meat and all comes from the fact that we're eating all this poisonous meat. That's why we have all these problems. Yeah. Not because we're eating meat, but Mm -hmm. I want to hear your story a little bit. Was this business born from COVID? Um, So we did actually launch our farm during COVID was it yeah. planned and then COVID hit or uh, so? No. So a little backstory sure. about us, of course, because I, um, I did, I, I heard, I want to hear about this too, but I heard that you started with, let me see if I can get this right. One pig and 12 chickens. Yeah. So we actually just started with one, originally just one pig. The chickens weren't far after the pig. You're right. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so we were actually, family was going through, we were, we were, struggling you know a sure. little bit and we actually put money together just to buy this pot belly pig and this pig cost 60 dollars. so <laughs> to tell you how wow. much how much it was just for us to get this pig it's pretty it wasn't much. to get started though but yeah so we we only got it just because it was like off of a whim kind of thing one night we have we had the space and we were actually gonna put her on the porch is all uh-huh. we were gonna we had the florida room pot belly pig. yeah a little mm-hmm. pot belly which you know everybody gets to start off with for some reason i don't know why it just happened <laughs> like, like the mascot or something <laughs> yeah it yeah. is yeah. for some reason i don't know why so we got the pot belly pig and we, we named her pua and she lived on the porch for a while and then 
As she got a little bit bigger, she ended up breaking out of the screen, <laughs> screen door, and she would go back and forth and roam through the neighbor's yard with his cows what? and everything else. Oh, gosh. And then, yeah, then we got the chickens after that, and once we actually got the chickens, I actually, to build the... So everything that we've ever put on a farm, I've built by hand. So wow. the first coop that I ever built, we had an old gazebo that was grown up with weeds. And so I went out there and tore it down and I built a chicken's coop out of it. it. Out yeah. of that's gazebo. amazing. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. So it was, you know, it was free. I didn't have to buy anything for it. Right. And I have a drill and screws and stuff. So I was so like, yeah, are you handy or did you have a job where you, or did you grow up doing carpentry? So like? yeah, I did grow up uh, building stuff. Like my dad was big into building and construction stuff so i learned a lot i mean at, sure. a, at a younger age until a certain point in my life i did learn a lot from him as far as doing that and i loved i just love being outside and fishing hunting and yeah building stuff so right, right. i did grasp a lot of those concepts from that time of my life so that's a, it's it a great thing to know over, yeah. a, do it yourself or that is <laughs> yeah. a good thing to so know. yeah we did that with the chickens so and then after that we like we like dove like head first in this thing and the next set of animals we got was a couple of emus which was they're exotic animals so they're the coolest yeah. things they though are, they're yeah. literally dinosaurs <laughs> they, like, they, they did practically you, yeah did you get those for food or no so when we learning. first started the farm we were just getting animals just because we liked having them yeah, yeah. so it was never a thought that it's this never would become like a business, business. Oh, no. okay because I was thinking maybe you were just going to do like a, a, a petting zoo type thing yeah. where people could come and pay and see the animals but you maybe it was a, like a therapeutic thing at that time yeah too. i think so and it was just like we were like kind of getting into it we enjoyed raising them taking care of them we always have had dogs but it's like this is a little bit different than just sure sure dogs. well you have dogs you have 12 you told me <laughs> yes yeah well we only had Farm four at dogs. that time yeah we only have four it, inside dogs it's like yeah. a passion project that grows into a business yeah and, and it's it the did. best kind and you know what we love is since we've been doing this podcast we have had so many great stories of people starting these businesses during covid that have become so successful yeah it's like it almost forced so many of us to so step many out of people, the comfort zone and just do something and to chase yeah. your dream like that dream yeah. you've been afraid to chase but now your feet are to the fire and I, it's almost like you dis, you guys discovered this was, it was not like you were dreaming of having a farm. Yeah. You just kind of realized as you were doing it, this is really it. great. Yeah. Yeah. When did you go from, let's just get emus and have fun animals to yeah. like, this is something we could really make a go of. Yeah. So we filled the farm up pretty quickly, I would say, with different animals and stuff like that. Where does one get, it's like Amazon? How do you get so, <laughs> The actually big place that you can get just about any animal at all is Craigslist. Really? Um, there's a farm and garden section. Wow. And forever, that is where we were buying animals from. Uh, people sell them on there all the time. Oh, I, didn't I was going to say, did you get, were you able to rescue any? Were any for free? Like yeah. How? So we. Because you guys are struggling. So it's yeah, like you were we did. scraping up all you had just to <laughs> yeah. buy these animals. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, we did have, we had some friends and stuff that, you know, would help us getting nice. a few animals here and there just because you know we had a place to raise them and they knew sure. i would take care of them whatever so we would do that too and they would you know we had a, a good community of people around us wanting to help you know just see that and then they oh, gave oh, a place nice. for their kids oh, to come and just and yeah. enjoy the animals and stuff get some um, outside time yes <laughs> <laughs> but they, you know they still know that you know you you can take care of them we can come whenever we want and see them and then you just take care of the hard part for yeah, us yeah. Do the hard right part. Yeah. you do all the work yeah. right we want to come take a picture with that and yeah. be like i have an emu <laughs> what? go home right yeah <laughs> but you i mean it's good experience for you i'm sure leading up to yeah the so, business side so yeah we we really, I think, did a lot of studying during that time of really like, because, you know, we we're first generation farmers, so I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. Right. As far as like raising animals and making sure they're healthy, taken care of, you know, right facilities, right structures. So we were doing research like crazy. And, and before we ever bought an animal, we would do research real heavily on them and like, okay, what does it take to raise this animal? What do they need to be, you know, the to survive, care. Yeah. the care? What does that need to look like right. for them? And so we would do that before we bought them. And then once we did that, then, you know, learning by researching is totally different than, you know, actually when it becomes when it, hands yeah. on. Sure. Because it then you, you have guidance to yeah. jump. Yeah. And you have to deliver right. a calf in yeah. the middle of right. a field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the night. Pull it out because yeah. the mom's heaven's going to die if yeah. she doesn't have the yeah. calf. It's hey. A, it, those situations can get a little, you know, just yeah. dependent. And then, you know, you have... 
animals that get loose and oh, sure. mm. you have to catch them and some yeah, of them and are dangerous. we have dangerous. things like coyotes yeah. in Florida. Yes. And, and that was one thing those, we... And raccoons that'll eat your chickens right That was their one thing we ran into <laughs> that was a, a big problem at mm-hmm. first because we didn't have anything that was protecting them and <laughs> we were losing our first group of chickens, you know, we were losing them like crazy to coyotes and we live by woods so we have issues with wild hogs and stuff like that oh, too. Yeah. So what do you do? Do you put uh, powered lines around them or something? Electrical. So... Once we started realizing that, I at first I started putting game cameras out and trying to figure out what that actual issue is that's mm-hmm. getting yeah, them. Yeah, that's smart too. Figuring out what kind of animal it is is, is something. I'll, it could have just been a raccoon, but so it was a specific solution based on the predator, yeah. right? So they yeah. were ended up being bobcats, coyotes, um, oh, stuff wow. like that. Uh, breaking How cool in to see coops. that though. Yeah. I get so excited for any wildlife. So I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. When they're eating your livelihood. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't want to watch them <laughs> eating the chickens. They, but, they get yeah. the pretty creative on figuring out how to pull oh. an animal through, you know, an inch, inch chicken wire. Oh, oh. so we actually, um, we had interviewed quite some time ago the Pasture yes. Brothers um, that had a little chicken farm out here in Lake County. Yeah, um, they've they've since shut it down, but they had that happen where the raccoons would one of the raccoons would go and scare all the chickens into a corner, and the yeah. other one would just pluck them, pluck their bodies right out of the little yeah. hole, yeah. like and, uh, pieces smart. of them all over the place. It's, it was, uh, it reminds me of like Jurassic movie. Park when the guy's got the gun on the predator and then he looks over and there's one right there and he's like, clip yeah. a girl. Because the way he described it was yeah. they purposely scare them all to one spot while one's waiting. Yeah. And they, just like you've probably seen, oh. it was horrific because I go, when they get to the corner, what are they doing? He's like, they just start pulling whatever they can grab. They'll grab and pull parts right through. Yeah, they will. It's They'll a rip bath. Wings so, off, legs off. So you probably care. found a giant mess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we need to figure out a solution for that. So what we ended up doing was we got a livestock guardian dog and oh. we have three of those now and it has absolutely saved us from ever and losing those, another what animal. What do you have? Are they border collies? So they- what we have is uh, Anatolian shepherds mm-hmm. um, and we also have an Anatolian great Pyrenees mix. And the f- two of the dogs we actually got were given to us by a guy who used to have him on his farm and they moved into apartments and his <gasps> dogs were miserable. Oh, I bet. Um, but they were already uh, raised to be, the, they or, they, or are they just the genetically farm. raised, I guess? So that. they have a lot of natural instinct of to protect yeah. and to to smell and defend. Um, oh, but that is cool. there is some training process if the animal, like, because one of our girls, Burrow, she was actually born on a farm with like goats and sheep. Yeah. So she, when a puppy's raised in it, they're way more naturally intuitive to, yeah. okay, this is what I'm protecting oh, wow. from all of that. It, it's like a bond almost that they get with yeah. the sheep and stuff. Yeah, I've seen That's that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But the other two that we got after that were, they were more of like roamers on a lot of land before. So it was pretty much kill anything that was not us um so, so you okay. had to train them not to eat the animals so we yeah. had to train those two and we actually ended up having a trainer come out and uh, <laughs> oh wow they had a trainer oh, yeah cool. um, because they were we were having some issues with them at night with yeah, some yeah. of the animals with one of our pigs and actually one of our emus that actually didn't end up making it because oh. he was oh he was my buddy um because oh. he was the, they were one of the first two we have and he was he was so i guess dear to me and he took on to me like and he like imprinted he followed me on you, everywhere. Yeah. The girl was a little bit more scary. Her name was Jelly Bean, um, but his name was Gumball. And oh, that's that's cute. <laughs> he would, but he would. He loved to like peck lightly or peck and pull hair and stuff. So he would do it. He did it to the dogs. <gasps> and I should have followed more of the guy's instruction when we first dropped him off about not letting him around certain animals at first. Yeah. And I always let them roam around the part of the farm we had him. And we ended up losing him. Uh, we replaced him with another one, but. Of course, was never never the same. No, of course, of course of him. Not. So no. that was a tough loss. Um, uh, but and but, it was our first first but, loss too. But these so, yeah. are as as a farmer, a first generation farmer. Yes. These are all learning valuable yes. learning lessons. And that we don't hear this word very much nowadays. First generation farmer. Yeah, we really. Uh, how don't. old are you, Brandon? If uh, I can ask. I just turned thirty. So yes. okay, so you're young. Like how how many? Younger people are saying, "Oh, I think I'm going to start a farm." Yeah, like that is pretty. That is hot. You know, it's going to be grueling work. Yeah, but rewarding 
you Absolutely. know, in its own way. W- was it successful right away, though? I mean, as soon as you started, I did want to mention real quick that we do have some experience with protection dogs because our dog protects us from ants and lizards. And <laughs> yeah, stuff absolutely. And, and yeah. weird noises. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, or a YouTube video of a dog barking. Yes. But, <laughs> you, saw, but, you saw how violent she was when you came in. <laughs> yes, very. <laughs> but I, I don't want to like skip over the whole story. I really don't because I'm curious how you went from one thing to the other. But yeah. did you find that once you started going into a business, it just took off? Or did did you have to keep kind of tinkering with it to get it right? Yeah, so how we kind of actually got into actually selling drugs from the farm, the first thing I actually did was we were doing live animal sales. So we would sell to other farmers oh. or oh. we would sell what they would call as roaster pigs or other things like that. And I actually sold to another farm for a while. We sold eggs and we sold our, our pigs to them for them to process chickens them for when meat. you would grow. In yep. A, meat so chickens too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, they're, they're, they're not starting their own farm. They're processing them themselves. Basically. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So we were doing, I was doing a lot of that just to make, you know, money here and there for sure. the farm to keep it growing and keep yeah. it moving. Um, and so that's kind of where I started. And then, a little bit, just a little bit over a year ago, we got into doing markets and we were only selling a few jarred items and whole chickens. That was all we were selling. We didn't have any beef ready for processing. Yeah. Our pork was, we didn't have very many pigs as far as like ready for processing or we weren't really to that point yet. Yeah. So we were only selling chicken and it was whole chickens only. Um, and we were selling jars and that's how we started and it. From there, once we started doing markets, we kind of really had, I would say, favor in a way of with different market directors and people just really like our branding and stuff like that. And my my brother does all of our marketing stuff. And yeah, everything your marketing like that. is amazing. It really by is. The way. Yeah. And yeah. I, he's to thank for you know putting us out there, making us look good. We make you know it makes a market look good when yeah your marketing looks good. It's not like we just got a bunch of stuff just thrown together. Yeah, it's, you yeah. know, it looks my, very professional. Yeah. Like I've, I've he, he is amazing. The website. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the pictures, like, I mean, it, did he take all the pictures and everything, Yes, too? so we take all the pictures ourselves, yeah, and he, he can take care of it. He edits all my like videos, this yeah. Guy, yeah. Yeah, and so he, as yeah. Sir, a person that's very particular. You would get along and, well with him. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> but as someone who's analyzing all that when we're preparing for the show, I'm thinking, wow, this this place has got its deal together, for sure. So yeah. that really does go yeah, a long it, way. Yeah, and it helps when you have, like, an in-house designer. So he's got yeah. a master's degree in graphic arts design, media oh, design. He went to Folsom University for that. So oh, nice. nice. Very nice. In order to have that is, like, a piece that people have to spend a lot of money on Especially just to have business. that. Yes. Yeah. And so having that has been so good. So you, it's great to have that, but it's still not going to work if the meat isn't very good. So right. You, right. So yeah. you're selling your chickens and it's taken off, I guess. Yeah. So we, we did grow pretty quickly and we got into, you know, we were doing only one market, two markets here and there. And then we kind of started to, we start having some pork available for sale. So we introduced pork into it. And then we actually ended up our first cow that we actually used for processing was one of our, one of our bowls. And you can only get certain cuts of meat from a bowl because of the testosterone makes the meat tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got ribeye strips and fillets from him and, yeah, uh, nice. It was, our favorites. The yeah. best part. It, it's great. It's really <laughs> the, the best, best cuts yeah. of steak you get yeah, back, yeah, right. but yeah. you don't get roast or anything like that. Yeah, what? Sure. But you get some good cuts, but the rest is all ground beef. Right. But we actually ended up processing that cow, which a lot of people don't know this story, but um, we had a Scottish Highland bull and they have pretty big horns or whatever. And one night he was, he seemed to be having like this tendencies to get a little bit more aggressive to like gates and stuff. And it seemed to happen after I let him into the pasture with the other, with the other cows for breeding sure. and stuff. So he actually took one of the gates off one night with his horns and destroyed my mom's car. Um, oh my gosh. Oh. So she had called us. She's he like, he needed a toy or something. Yeah. <laughs> he would flip his trough around, sling it around off of his head and everything. Oh. Oh. I grew up with cows and bulls and my grandfather's truck had dents in it from that kind of stuff. But wow. wow. Yeah. So she called me. She's like, somebody, somebody's outside destroying my car. <laughs> and so she's thinking somebody's out there with like a of baseball course. bat destroying her car. Like, hear it. Yeah. You know, in my head, I'm like, dude, why, how would somebody even get all the way down here? Why would they destroy your car? Right. So I What'd get out do, there. What you mom? I was like, what's going on? Why right? did you make mad? So I get out there and of course it's the bull yeah. absolutely yeah. just annihilating her car. Wow. And what I'm like, heck? how'd you get him to stop? Um, so he listened to me very well. So he, as far as like listening to me, he yeah. never 
was ever aggressive towards me or anything like that. Wow. Or, um, so he was very, as far as like that, he would listen to what I was doing and I could move him pretty well. So I got him back into the pasture and after that incident, I was like, okay, it might be getting to a point where we probably should just go ahead and process him. Yeah. And that's why that was kind of like the first beef offering that we had was from that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was crazy how we got into actually naughty. selling beef. See what happens. So, oh my you yeah. could have lived here a little longer. Yeah. Because <laughs> we really did love him, but it was like. But is he going to hurt somebody? Yeah. Is he going to hurt another yeah. animal? The next or thing is like, yeah. yeah, is he going to hurt somebody else? Yeah. You know? So that was kind of like into that. So horns are always not the best thing to have on cows if you don't have if you can get them naturally pulled because yeah. we raise most of our breeds that we raise now all are naturally pulled they don't have horns yeah they're less what aggressive naturally pulled mean so they're just born like born that? without them like okay. Anguses in general don't ever have horns yeah okay um, so it's like it once a cow has been bred and bred and bred for so many years it's like a dog being born without a tail they don't, you know, some dogs are born do? without a tail. Uh, well, some, there are some breeds of cattle that just don't have horns. Oh, okay. Um, so Anguses are just one of those. Okay. Um, and then, of course, when you do cross them, so we do cross with our Brahma bull. Um, they do have horns. Um, but we haven't, he hasn't bred any back yet that we've gotten to where you actually, because sometimes they could go either way. They could be born with horns. They might not be born with horns. So it just depends what genetic trait. Yeah. Kind of makes it on. So, so that's part of the research that goes into it, right? The genetics. So how do we breed them? Like, does it, is it in controlled environment when you breed them or do you let it happen the natural way? Like how did you guys decide to go about? Yeah. So we just, we have our bulls. We release them to the pasture with, with our heifers or our cows, depending on which which ones are out there. And so we just let them do... Wait the, a minute. What's the difference between a heifer and okay. a cow? Okay. It sounds like a dirty joke, but I want to know too. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. So this actually works with almost all farm animals. There's there's two different names for a castrated animal or a you know an animal that's a male that still has its parts. Or you also have with females, there's a difference between... So a heifer is a girl cow that has never been bred or never had a baby. Okay. So once uh, oh. a heifer cow has a baby, it now becomes a cow. Oh my god. It's gosh. like the opposite of the insults. Never. Yeah. yeah wow. Exactly. That's just like just like with male cows, you call a bull a bull and then a steer means he's been castrated. So they have two names for him. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, which is new. which I'm is the majority learning. of meat that we eat all across America is is most of the time steers. Okay. Uh, because well, they banned them. Yeah. They have no use of butt for meat anymore. So, yeah. and of course, nobody wants 40, 50 bulls running around the property. It no. just too is a to disaster. It's too dangerous. You know, <laughs> waiting to happen. Oh, so, wow. but you let them in there and you, yep. you let them just naturally breed. And yeah. Then- so, there's usually a time frame of about 70 days that you would put bulls in a pasture. Um, right now, we have them in there with them all the time um, because. When you have a lot, a good amount of space for the cows, they they function pretty well together. Yeah. Um, and Separate. eventually, we might pull them out once once they're about to calve and stuff like that. Okay. But yeah, a lot of people do it too, where they just leave bulls in with all the time. So you have options of controlled breeding to where you only run a certain amount of time to allow the actual cows to go into heat to get bred and then pull them out. Yeah. Or you can just leave them in there all the time with them too. So we're we're trying that for the first time right now to kind of see how it's going to work out. And so far, it's been it's been good. So. That is interesting. So, so how many, um, how much cattle do you have? Yeah. So currently we're up to 33 head of cattle, um, which is not the number we're wanting to finish at, of course. But yeah, we are slowly increasing our constantly. So my current goal. Put it out there in yeah, the universe. Yeah, absolutely. You know? <laughs> so my current goal is to have at least 60 head breeding cows. So okay. that's just for our breeding. So I want to have, make sure we have 60. So we have a turnaround of 60 cows being born each year. That's what I was going to ask. How do you keep, cause you said 30, how do you keep the, I wondered how you keep the number from either exploding or dropping. Yeah. yeah. That's where the math and the yeah. planning comes so, yeah, in. Right? So right now out of those 33, we have almost a little under, a little under half right now are all steers. So those are all cows that are end up being are or are going to be end up being finished uh, yeah. for okay. me, and so we we are we're partnered with another ranch that is the only place we buy our cows from, and they for they raise grass finished cattle. Um, so we we partner with them for a lot of stuff as far as like where we get our cattle from because we want to make sure we're getting good breeding stock. We want to make sure we're getting yeah. good cows because just like anything, if you see something cheaper. 
it's not always a good thing. It possibly yeah, right, means you're buying a sick animal. So yep. we're super specific about where we buy our animals from, who we're getting them from, and we want to make sure we're building a good, you know, solid foundation yeah. for our cattle herd. So we get everything from them. So and we get them in by them every once in a while. We get some more, especially when we need some more steers. We get them from them too. So and then they've been supplying us with our, our heifers for breeding for the future too. So that's yeah, that's great. That do you partner awesome. with a, a a company that does the processing as well? So yeah, we do use a family owned operated processor right now. Uh, oh nice. Which is actually a really I would say almost a pandemic for smaller local farmers right now is USDA processors are very far and few in between. Really? They've really been kind of pushed out by, you know, bigger commercial mm-hmm. things and trying to really just push a smaller guy kind of out yeah. of the way. Yep, yeah, we watch documentaries about that Yeah, too. it's... Just it's, push it's, them right out. It's all the more reason to bad. pay those, those guys more yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, it's a... Yeah, it's so like, anybody listening, like small business, that is, and even people that own their own, you know, they they maybe are raising a cow on their own property. Yeah. We want to look for small processors like that when you do go to um, take your cattle or, you know, your, yeah. your cow to get processed. Mm-hmm. I want to also talk about the... Um, the pigs, the pastured, the pastured yes, pigs, yes. because that is really hard meat to find. Um, I used to be on a very special strict diet uh-huh. and I could have, but I could have pastured pork and you couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. So tell the audience what pastured pork is. Yeah, absolutely. So pastured pork is, if you know anything commercially about how hogs are raised, mm-hmm. is they're raised in barns. Um, yep. So enclosed buildings, most, most of the time, maybe open air every once in a while. But so it, they can put it on the label. But yeah, mm-hmm. but yeah. it's it's got a roof over them, and they're super crowded. Uh, yeah. Same way with cattle in a feedlot. Yeah. But it's a lot more. You can concentrate even more because they're a smaller animal. It's just so dirty. But yeah, yeah, you introduce the same exact things, bacteria, whatever you name it, in that. But what we pretty much do is everybody knows about wild hogs. So mm-hmm. we know that they live in the woods, that they roam around. They can and be so, destructive. Yes, we pretty <laughs> much introduce that the same way you would put a a cow on the grass. So we call it forested pork. So we raise our mm-hmm. pigs in forested areas uh, or wooded areas. So it gives these animals access to dirt, which actually, uh, if you ever see pigs rooting, they actually eat dirt for minerals. So it's where they mm-hmm. get a lot of their mineral oh, wow. minerals from. You never have to give it as a source because they have it as a source yeah. constantly. And also there's healthy bacteria in soil. Yes. So they are probably benefiting from that as well. Yeah. Wow. See, so yeah, yeah. I know some stuff. So you just let them <laughs> root and forage and do like they would in out in the wild. Yeah, because so, they eat worms and insects. Yeah, they eat, and eat acorns. Fungus. They eat grass too. Yeah. Um, so they're just like, like omnivores, yeah. like us. So we do that with them, but we run it on the same thing. We do a rotational grazing, just like with our cows, but we rotate. We do rotationals inside of those wooded paddocks. So and it so, not just annihilate the land. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. put them in those areas so it's, it's low impact on them. And then we can rotate them into the next thing. So actually by, this is just something cool with regenerative practices as far as like raising pigs on this kind of land. Is they actually disturb the earth to where if there was a bunch of weeds and just junk grown up over time with those pigs slightly just rooting up that area they actually redisturb the earth and cause grasses and natural things that actually might be laying dormant in the ground to actually regrow and they pretty much stir up the soil by wow. them actually rooting they're up. like so, a yeah. natural rototiller basically they are yeah. that they, is they really cool. are do you have I, this is probably somewhat obvious but in these wooded areas too you must have like fences running through the woods so yeah you can so yeah, we do. We run all of our pigs on electrical fences. You only need usually about a two strand electrical wire because once a pig learns that it can't go through, they're super they're smart. smart. They're yeah. smart and they know. Okay, I don't tell you. Could go in there and chase them around, and they will. They won't go through the fence most of the time. Most yeah, of the time. Yeah. Most of the time. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I've but, had a dog like that yeah. where they learned, oh, wait, I can but, run yeah. fast enough. I can Yeah, you will have shock. some that will be like, oh, I can take this. And they'll, they'll, they'll go <laughs> through it. Oh, That's but, how my yeah, Most of the time was. they learn, yeah. My grandfather's but what, bull but would what, walk through it, the electric gate, walk yeah. right through it. And yeah. what would a farm be if you're not chasing a pig or yeah. a chicken around every yeah. once in a while, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could relate a little because I remember him get, noticing or getting the call that the bull's loose in the neighborhood, those kinds of things. <laughs> Tormenting so people. We had a little bit of that stuff growing up. Yeah, it was. he was really mean. Yeah, he was really... He would have to get behind him in the truck and slowly push him back oh my into gosh. the gate because yeah. he wasn't going to move. Yeah, if you got a cow on a lot of, a lot of land, they are not fun to catch at all. Yeah, um, 
especially when you're on foot. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Uh, that's the things you guys have learned, though, just yes. how, to, how to manage these types of situations. Yeah. So it's amazing. Sp- so speaking of on foot, do you guys have horses on the farm? So we do have some horses. Um, I, I'm actually, I would say more of, I move most of my cows either by foot or by a golf cart, honestly. Yeah. So although we, we, we do have a tenancy walker that used to run cattle, I don't have like a horse yet that to me is because he's a little bit older that is mm-hmm. like ready and trained for it he's yeah. he'd be real rusty and we use yeah. him for riding and stuff like that but something i've really learned about as far as like moving my cows and stuff is they i've always been really good about instilling like them listening to my voice and learning like certain keywords yeah that like for instance uh one of my brothers put on a gate for me the other day and i already told him i was like bro i think this is a little loose on the hinge and it it just, I don't think it's going to make it. And he's like, it's okay. It's okay. I was like, all right, or well, whatever you say. So about, I was, I was getting ready, getting up for market on Sunday. And one of my brothers called me. He's like, Hey, just want to let you know that the cows are out. I'm like, Oh, awesome. I got to leave in 30 minutes. Yeah. So it was about, it was about half of the herd was out. The other half was just didn't even know what was going on. So they were just still in there, yeah. but they're all the way across the property. And we're still fencing off land so mm. we have a lot of open you have areas still acres yeah, yeah. Now, and so. when we went there there was nothing there so yeah, we're yeah. we're refencing off everything so sure. there are like you know f- about 50 acres away from where they're supposed to be Ugh. and what happened was that gate latch that i told them about slipped Broke. down and fell over so the cows were out yeah so i i went i went and got some feed which i train usually with alfalfa pellets for our grass our cows that were in the grass all the time but I didn't have that this time, so I had to use grain. <laughs> um, but all I do is I I pull out on the golf cart. I I my word for them is key to a kitty. It's it's not a word whatsoever. That was a noise though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But and you have to say it in a high pitched voice. So yeah. it's like key to a kitty. Yeah, it's like that. Calling a dog. And yeah. if you say that to the herd, you will literally see him start sprinting. Well, that is awesome. Is there any like? Do you want to get horses for the farm? Even just for like. You know, yeah, trotting around. Yeah, so we well, like to do. Like I said, we do have three. Uh, oh, you have three. Two of them. Are, well, actually, they're all rescues. So, oh, I love. We that. have two full grown ones, and then we have one that's a mini. And the mini came with our first Tennessee Walker. Um, oh, cool. So they kind of came together, and so they're they're they pretty much just chilled all the time in the pasture with our our three donkeys, um, which Ooh, are res- don- which donkey. are rescues as well. <laughs> I was going to ask you guys continue to rescue animals. Yes, you? yeah. So this week. Uh, we've actually rescued rescued a calf, and yesterday we rescued a little uh, piglet from the side of the road too. Oh, so, yeah. I was going to say, what does oh, rescue mean? It. Like you find a place where they're being abused, or where they're being uh, abandoned, or so those can be instances um, if we get calls about it or whatever. But it's more a lot of the times of either people sometimes need a place to rehome an animal because they don't. They either can't take care of it. We like when I say we have twelve dogs, a lot of those are rescues. As far as like we've had even customers sometimes like. You, you know, we're dog? not we're not home enough anymore uh, and our dog we feel like is being neglected uh, and we don't know what else to do with it. We want to make sure it goes to somewhere where it's gonna be out in the open, be yeah. with people every day. And so we've rescued a couple of dogs like that too. Wow. Um, but yeah, with, with the like with the calf that we rescued this week, I actually had um a, somebody reach out to me that I know that was like, Hey, um it's actually Nikki from Whimsy and she was like, Hey, somebody is trying to get rid of this calf they found it on the side of the road there wasn't any pastures nearby oh. and we're trying i'm trying to get a hold of you that way i can figure out if you guys can take it you know whatever and so i'm of course to jump right on it especially if it's a cow man i'm, yeah. I'm all about that life <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. and it was our first cow cow rescue so i was super excited oh, about it how do you do so that cool. you have a like a cow trailer horse trailer you go get him with yeah except this instance it was it was a probably a two to four day old calf. So it was, oh. she was super small. Oh, just put her um, back of a truck. Or yeah. So I put her in, in the back seat of my truck in one of our little travel cages that we have back there with a the towel and everything. Yeah. Now and, when you rescue one, do you reach out to local um, ranches or people that you know to see if maybe they lost um, one? Because that yeah. was a mama that just had her somewhere, maybe abandoned her or something. Yeah. So yeah. This is the first time I've actually had this happen with a cow. Um, now it was in a couple of cities away from us, so I have no idea what who to yeah. call ranches or, who to call. And yeah. honestly, even the person who probably lost it probably he probably honestly runs a cow calf operation. He probably doesn't check his herd very often. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the cow that I personally think just as what I think I know about cows is that this cow is probably not a good mom. 
uh, yeah. because she allowed her calf to walk off from her. And usually they don't let them get very far, especially if she's only around two to four days old. She should not have let yeah. her get that far from her side, especially to walk through some type of fencing, which was probably barbed wire or some was she cut up? rough fencing. And there no, no cuts. So oh, and nice. barbed wire is... It's an iffy, it's it's cheap fencing, so it's a lot of times why us farmers tend to use it. It's mm-hmm. a little bit cheaper to run it than we all want to run woven wire, which is when I'm running around our whole property. Cause I, what is it called, woven wire? Yeah, so okay. it's it's really just little squares of fencing. Oh, okay. And they just call oh, it woven okay. wire. Yeah, it's okay. all woven together into squares, yeah. so it's actually way more secure. It stops them. Yes. Yeah. Instead of them You're not going to gonna walk it. through it. The only way they're going to yeah. get through it is literally jumping over it. I got you. So, we had the old school stuff, you know, like three strands. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. that's probably what it was. Yeah. Um, and she got through the barbed wire is what I think. And she was dying and oh. she wasn't going to have any milk. So they ended up getting some milk into her before I got her. But it's like one of those things. I didn't know if we had, she had any colostrum yet. Cause you honestly don't know how old this calf is, but yeah. more than likely yeah. she was old enough to walk away. So she probably has had colostrum already, but we gave her some of that. I reached out to one of my farmer friends that saved my life with that. And she gave me some colostrum. She does dairy cows. Um, so I got some of that in her and she's been doing really good. So, oh, yeah. That's so, was, awesome. so was that a lesson as well? Like, is that something you might save now? Yeah. Can you save it? Yeah, like, absolutely. Just in case something like this happens Yeah. Again? So actually how we got into raising cows is, is by bottle raising them. So our first set of cows that we ever got was, um, 17 bottle babies, um, wow. was the first thing we ever did, which, uh, if anybody knows anything about bottle raising cows, it is probably one of the most strenuous, difficult things to do, uh, especially 17 at a time. Uh, and, 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 and wait a minute, oh let's my. do the math. There's 17 <laughs> cows. There's only 10 of you guys. Yeah, so and somebody's yeah, taking at, the at, lead at that shift. time, there was only probably six of us that weren't usually working other jobs because we slowly brought everybody home from their jobs. Sure. Yeah. So there was a couple of us sometimes and at first we were just feeding by hand by bottle and we've we've you learned definitely a system after that? Got a system and they make better things for that now. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've been in it. But individual. Oh my gosh. When bottle raising cows, especially in one area, you deal with a lot of sickness, a lot of bacteria yeah. and scours is one of the biggest problems with mm. those cows because they're not getting the best source of milk. And so, and they're because, not getting the mama milk, yeah, yeah. And because if they're not drinking water, they can develop scours, which is pretty much they dehydrate themselves by just using the bathroom nonstop. It's diarrhea. Oh. So God. it's diarrhea and they dehydrate themselves. It can be done really quickly. So you end up having to tube cows and everything else. And so what does a tube mean? Like, so IV literally almost? a tube down their throat. And you're pretty much force feeding them either milk, electrolytes, and water, and stuff like that. Oh my oh, god! So, so I've, uncomfortable. The first time we lost a good bit of our herd, we only out of those 17, I think we got seven through successfully, oh. and we also ran into pneumonia. Uh, oh my god! That first be, time through, uh, so it was down uh, your spirit a little bit. Yeah, it was it was difficult. And also, it, you guys seem like you're animal people. So if you are an animal person, and you're you know just because you're you know a farmer and you are going to process this meat one day, it doesn't mean you don't love the animal yeah. still. You know what I mean? So to, like when you lost the emu, you're like, oh, you know, yeah. it's like a connection that we should have with animals. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? And that was one of, that's one of our big things is we thought, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to eat meat and even as a family, if we're going to eat meat, we want to know how the animal is being raised. We want to know that it's being loved on, that it's being taken care of, that, mm-hmm. You know, our hands are touching it, taking care of the same. And we know we're raised to the best of our ability so that when we sit down and eat this meal, we know we're putting good things on our body. But we also know that we're raised something correctly and how it should be raised. Yeah. yeah. And you that was kind of what drove us. Yeah. While it was yeah. on the earth. But now on, it's giving back right. to you, right? And now, technically, of course, there's people that are vegans or vegetarians that don't eat meat. Mm-hmm. But really, naturally, how we as humans function, we eat meat, we need the proteins for functioning yep. correctly, mm-hmm. for yeah. muscle building, all those kinds of things. Yeah. So, you know. You have to take supplements if you're yeah. vegan. To, yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to have. And them. we've actually had a lot of vegans and vegetarians actually eat meat again. Um, so it's something that we've been super proud of. We've had a lot of customers that we've been able to get just because most people quit eating meat in general just because of the stuff that's being pumped in the animals and, and the, how horrible they're, and the how they're being treated. Yes. Mm-hmm, exactly. And so that's the biggest reason. I actually went down that path one time in my life too uh-huh. before I became a farmer. Yeah. So that was like we one of too. our main passions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, 
Yeah, after you watch yeah. a couple of them documentaries. Yeah, yeah them things will sure get will. you. Yeah, but you're also thinking it's just poisoning. This is why people are dying of cancer and all kind it of is, weird yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so, and I also think, I know you guys are a faith-based organization. I would yeah. imagine you're also just giving thanks to the food you're eating when you're eating it. And there's something about mm-hmm. whether it's, whether you're religious or not, the... I, I mean, the Native Americans saw it this way, where there's yeah. something about just thanking the universe or whatever for supplying the food. I don't know. I feel like there's something healthy in the body yeah. about there all is. of that. Yeah. Yeah. There's that. And also, I think even when we just look back at the regenerative practices, practices is, is with that, we're we're adding to the soil, not taking away. Yeah. Yes. So it even better when than you, before. When you... And there's a lot of farmers that aren't still doing that. And, you know, and a lot of people have been doing it for generations, so they don't know another way. Um, and they may not even know that they're destroying the soil. So every time we yep. refertilize the ground and all this, we actually are taking away from our soil. Oh, yes. Um, yep. And so we can only take away so much soil before, you know. It's like dead soil. We, yeah. we, we've mm-hmm. uh, got some friends in North Carolina that have a farm. And they, uh, that's what they discover. Well, for what is it like seven years it takes to bring soil, dead soil back to yeah. life? Yeah. 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 It to be it's like a soybean. five to seven. Yeah. Yeah. Well that, yeah, it was a soybean farm and it was so depleted. There was like seven of the good, um, microbes in it. Yeah. When you're supposed to have billions, they had like yeah. seven. So yeah. that's so it, you, exactly it was what that, you're saying. You can it was that it. deplenished, yeah. but they've yeah. brought it back. So we've learned a lot about yeah. regenerative Farming. Did I say Re- it? Regenerative yes, you farming. got it. Regenerative <laughs> and farming. If yeah. you ever need help, you know, getting the cows back in, I probably have 200 hours into Red Dead Redemption. So, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring your horse. <laughs> you got to borrow well, a horse. You reminded me of that when you were talking about the, the golf cart. I, yeah. I remember in the game where you have to try to get the cows in and whatever. Corral in the Not the quite cattle. the same, but. Yeah, yeah, so, I know what you're talking about. So, I lo- so you guys have chickens and ducks as well. Yes, yes. I, I am... I love the, um, I'm fascinated by the fact that you built the, the, what is it? What do you call it? Chicken chicken, tractor. A chicken tractor. So remember a tractor. I kept thinking we were talking about tractors when we talked to the, uh, (laughs) but it's got the, it's got like the thing on the bat, you know, it's got like their little home they stay in yeah, and then it's hooked to a tractor or you hook it up. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is the chicken feed off the ground and cause you know, chickens eat meat, they eat insects and stuff like that and they peck the ground and roots and stuff. And then, but they destroy the earth they yeah. destroy it and turn it up. So then you just move the tractor to another location. Yep. And now that land has time to grow, kind of grow and up. And it's it got around. all that nice chicken poop in there, yeah, which is the which best is fertilizer. very high in, in ammonia, yes. It's, it's Chickens very are good. easier to do. I mean, you, you, they are getting into the pigs and all that. You so have I'm, to move them. You can't, you know, you can't just drag them to a yeah. new spot. Yeah, the larger livestock you get into, it's more more hands-on more more land more difficult more yeah. land so yeah we run right now we we need to build a couple more but we run about six chicken tractors and we actually move all of ours by hand as well um so they are there if any you know anything about joel salatin um he's one of our mm-hmm. he's really one of the forefathers of who kind of really restarted the movement of regenerative practices oh, and cool. he's they got a really big farm up in west virginia what's his name again? uh joel salatin I'm going to write it and down. The, the chicken tractor that we build is actually a model off of his. Now, I put our, my own little tweaks and stuff on it sure. that I feel like work good for us. But we can fit up about 75 birds in each tractor. Oh. Um, and how many birds do you have? Uh, well, we have six tractors. So we oh. usually run oh anywhere. Gosh. And we run it on Check a cycle us. just like it with everything else. So we only process about around 150, 60 birds at once. So we usually fill about a couple of tractors up. And then we have another batch that's about two weeks behind them. So mm. we usually run about around 300 to 400 birds at a time. Wow, that's a lot. And those six tractors are about 10 by 12 um, in size. So wow. you so you, wait, you have a different tractor for every one? So no, there, do you- I have a different tractor. We have them, six numbered tractors. They're all the same size, but the uh, tractors run them with around two batches in each tractor okay. that are for a certain date for processing. So oh, gotcha. how many of you work on this farm? Uh, there is... 
there is 10 of us in our family. My mom and do the jarring part. My sister still has a daytime job. So there's really six of us guys that Doing all run this. the farm full wow. time. Yeah. Holy moly. I know it's not a touristy thing. I know it's not the kind of farm you bring your kids to in a hayride and all. But if you guys are ever open to it, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. I would, we would love to come out there and film a little clip because it sounds like it's quite an impressive operation. Yeah. yeah. So we are working on actually putting the store on our farm. Uh, oh, really? It's, it's really one of our dreams as yeah. far as like our customers being able to come yeah. and purchase directly That's what from I was going to ask because you're every weekend yeah. you're hitting. That's how we found you. We were at the yeah. MC Market out at Sensational Farms. Yeah. Yes. And we're just blown away by that place. But not you you not only had a little tent there where you were selling your products, you guys also had a food truck. Yes, yeah. So you're hoping to bring that all to the farm. Yeah. So our plan is to have that all in the farm course restaurant style as well, where you can actually come and eat and we're gonna do farm tours and stuff like that. Oh, so you are. that's awesome. So oh, this that's kind amazing. of farm is really big now in days in like agritourism as far as like people being able to come and tour and see mm-hmm. okay, this is how animals are raised, you get to see the operation now it's being ran all on grass and those kinds of things. So that is definitely in the works. Oh, yeah, maybe some, more, yes. maybe some more educational stuff yes. for people that are like, because you're, you're going to be able to tell the story of, look, this is what we started with. And yeah. We knew nothing. <laughs> yeah. So you could do it if you wanted Absolutely. to. And your customers that aren't, I feel like that's a great advertisement for the meat because if you, if you, it's very honest, you know, it's not mm-hmm. what's on the box. You can literally see, yeah, this is how it's raised. This is what you're eating and this is how we do it. Now, I feel like that would make a lot of people feel even more comfortable about eating it. Yeah. And that's really the main reason I started our YouTube as well. Cause of course, at mm-hmm. first we didn't have the farm open and we, we're still working towards it now that we moved. Cause I want it to be set up exactly, you know, how I want it for everybody yeah, to be able course. to see it. So, and everything moves smoothly for that kind of thing. But the big thing about the YouTube channel was I wanted customers to know, like, I'm not just coming to a farmer's market and trust in yeah. his voice. Yeah. I can actually go to his channel and see, okay, he's he's tending to the animals. I see how yeah, they're behind raising the them. Scenes. Like, you actually get to see it. And that was something super big, big for yeah. me, too, is, like, there has to be an avenue for us to be able to show people without them actually having to be here. Yeah. And social media and YouTube and all that kind of stuff is is driven nowadays. So that's yep. the best way that we could put it out there so that people could see it. So oh, we're going to so, put yeah. a link in the show notes and I'm going to go check out some of those. I love that <laughs> yeah. kind of stuff too. Um, uh, do, you have, in- do you have a drone? Uh, my brother actually does have a drone. Did yeah. he do drone footage of the place? Uh, we do have some drone footage yeah, of the that's farm. That's my latest yeah. addiction. Yes. I've got my new drone gets here on Thursday, but I'm like, it's He's actually a, studying for his license pilots, too. Yeah, so I'm about seventy five percent done with the study. But th- those kind of places are beautiful when you can see them from yes. the air. You know, it gives mm-hmm. a whole new scope of the scale of what you guys are doing and how. You know, when you hear what was you say one hundred and thirty acres around one hundred and forty. Yeah, one hundred and forty. That is an enormous yeah. amount of land. You know, people don't realize how many. I grew up on how five much acres. Take care of and five acres is huge compared yeah. to what most people live on. So you're talking about a massive piece of land. Should we yeah, have an acre, is. almost an acre, not even an acre? No, it's probably a quarter acre here. Oh yeah, it's yeah. too much. <laughs> <laughs> but like it can be condensed down just a little bit. Then I can maybe grow something without killing it because it'll be right there in my face. <laughs> So I know we're wrapping up, but I do, I do want to mention a couple of things or ask about a couple of things. Yeah. Um, you guys do do egg, you sell farm fresh eggs also, Yes, sir. Right? Yeah, duck and chicken. Oh, duck too. Yes. Oh, duck eggs are good. Yeah. Nice. Duck um, eggs are really good for baking. They are, yes. They're yeah, rich. so if you have yeah. any bakers out there. They are great for that. They call it the yeah. baker's secret. I tell people that all yeah. the time. Yeah. Most really people are. don't know that. Nope, they are. Um, Sheila Chandler. She's told us listening. about it. Yes. yes. The Kitchen Chandler told us about it. Yeah, the duck Kitchen eggs. Kitchen Chandler, yes. We oh, had but a sh- I, I'm going to read off a list of some of the things you guys jar, but your mom and your aunt started this whole thing. I didn't realize that. Were they just into jarring food and knew how to do the pickling and the jarring and all that for throughout their lives or did they learn it for the business or yeah so of course growing up they had experience a little bit of it you know with their their grandparents and their moms yep. and stuff like that and, we all had like know, a grandma or somebody somebody that that. always has done it but yeah, yeah they had never actually like fully done it like we do it now right yeah so it was just kind of something that we had like an idea of like okay let's put 
you know, our produce or something like that in our jars and let's, you know, put that into the business. Yeah. So they kind of headed that on and then they yeah. each have their own little sections of what they make. They're like um, specialties, so yeah, what they're good at. Yeah. But this is produce that's coming from your property that you're growing yeah. yourself. So we are, we're redoing that now. So we're end up going to have about three acres of produce on the farm. Um, wow. It should be 100% organic. Oh, um, wow. Which, of course, takes time. So now we're restarting that. So we've been using with a lot of local farmers right now for getting our produce until we can get back up to that point yeah. to where yeah. we can produce everything again. Because so, yeah. when it when you do say organic, um, if you are going to actually label it organic, do you have to have, you have to have the soil tested and everything, correct? Yeah. So we There's might not ever go through the process of actually getting certified organic just yeah. because it's a label to yeah, us it and is. it's, it's yeah. not that important and we feel like we're honest enough with our customers yeah. with with our with our people that if we tell them something they know they're yeah. it's going to happen there, so yeah there's also mean, some loopholes in that organic as we learned from the oh, folks yeah. at King Grove Blueberry Farm they do real organic they help stay yeah. up with that real organic movement which you may be aware is a whole new set of regulations to prevent the organic people from tricking the customers. Hydroponic. It's, yeah. It's oh, yeah, from hydroponic. hydroponics. Yeah, yeah, so they started the Real Organic Project. Yeah. And it's a group of farmers that do real organic regenerative farming as well. And to, you know, be like, stop pushing us out. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the hydroponic stuff is coming in and... It's technically, it's organic. That, but We're just yeah. adding the stuff to the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to your point, Brandon, that's that's really to your point because you're like, mm-hmm. we know how we do it. We're yeah. doing it natural. We're doing yeah. it. And you have the integrity That label sometimes it. doesn't yeah. mean yeah. as much as yeah. people think it does. You know, yeah. It helps sell it. But I, I got to run through the menu because some of this stuff sounds so good. You guys I do like a list. spicy pickle. Uh, yeah, we so, do. We have a, mm. a regular garlic onion dill, a spicy garlic onion dill, bread and butter, and then sweet and spicy. Oh, I didn't oh, even know you had that many. Spicy. Yeah, and then we actually do a uh, ghost pepper pickle, too. Ooh, that sounds if, like If you like a really hot try. pickles. I'll go good with our hot wing challenge <laughs> that we're yeah, doing. We're getting ready to do like a hot wings <laughs> challenge, the hottest hot sauces we could find. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you have different salsas? Yeah, so we... Uh, this is seasonal sometimes for us, but we mm-hmm. do a city slicker, which is our mild, yep. with the root and tootin', which you guys have had, which, which is love. more of our, I would say, hot salsa. Uh-huh. So good, though. Um, it's, got, oh, it's got almost like a fruit aftertaste, too. Yeah. It? And then we do a ghost town for that, which is also our ghost pepper. Yep. Oh. And then we also have done this a couple of times. We do a pico, which we call pico de cowboy. And nice. then we love do a uh, salsa verde as well. Oh, very mm. nice. And then you have beets. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead and say some stuff about beets. Beets are really good for you. They are. Root vegetables, I'm just saying. They're very good for females too, yes. Yes. Green beans? Yeah, we do dilly beans, spicy and regular. Ooh, spicy green beans are the best. Mm -hmm. You do jams and preserves as well? Yeah, we do. So we do a lot of different jams, and those are constantly changing. But we do have, of course, a couple staples, really big popular ones, which is our America Jam, our Raspberry Lemon Thyme. That's Uh, the one. Yes, that's that's the one she wants to try. What's the first one again? Uh, We call it America. Merca Mer- uh, jam. Yeah, Mer- it's jam. Uh, it's our mixed berry jam. Okay, okay. But uh, Love it. we wanted to. It's America, so we, know, we wanted we 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 create names for all of oh, our I stuff. Love it. So I know. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. part of the creativity and the marketing. Yes, yeah. And then monkey well. butter would probably be as far as like our sweet jams. That would be our, our third one, and monkey that's bananas, butter. pineapple, and coconut. Oh, you're oh. making me so hungry. Oh, the, that the, great on ice cream. The, oh, the oh, raspberry that. lemon thyme. That one too. Yeah, that's my jam. Okay, that's the last thing they make rubs and seasonings for the meat as well. Yes, we do. So we we specifically make them for certain cuts of meat, and we have a bunch of different ones. Um, as far as that, I think we have a lineup of almost about six or seven right now. Wow. And we do one for smoking. Uh, I can actually name. We do Moo Moo Woo, which is for uh, most beef stuff. Uh, rub and Grind is our spicy coffee rub. So it's a good smoke Ooh, one if you want a good bark, mm-hmm. uh, which you can use for grilling too. But we designed it for smoking in general. Right. Our Swine So Fine, which we use on literally everything swine? pork. Swine? You guys got creative <laughs> names. I like and we it. use that on our bacon too. So yeah. any type of pork, our wow. pulled pork on our truck, we use the Swine So Fine. So it all all of our seasonings. Our Bok Bok Rock is our amazing chicken rub that we use. And it actually pairs well with seafood too. Uh, so we do use that one too. And then, oh, I think I got them all. 
What was that? Man, that's wow. a good memory. It might be a couple more. So if somebody wanted it. to order some of these, do you have, are they available to order online? Do you ship to people? Yeah. So oh, we, perfect. we have on our website, you can order our meat, you can order all any of our jarred items, rubs, whatever you name it, peanut butter. Um, we do peanut butter too. Our honey crunchies out of this world, but. Our regular cream is pretty good, okay. too. I, I mean, I had to spend a few hundred time, bucks after this conversation. Time to, <laughs> time to stock the pantry. But, <laughs> what, but something else cool that you guys are starting to do is like a, like a membership. Yes, yes. That's we've been really doing cool. Yeah, the Cooler Club thing was our, is our newer thing. This is our second month in it to where we actually, you pay for a certain tier. We have a $50 uh, tier, which gives you some meat and pretty much one cut of meat and some jarred items. $75 is strictly meat only, and then your $100 is your $75 of meat and then a couple jarred items as well. We deliver that straight to your door every Friday and Saturday. I'm just telling you that those prices are amazing. Thank oh, you. that's a rotation. That is, I mean, oh. it feel, I, yeah, it's like a delivery. Like a subscription service. Yeah. Kind of thing. Okay. And, and, you know, it's... Um, you're making it affordable for fam. I feel you're making it affordable for families to eat the right way. Yeah, and so, it's almost so gourmet I wanna, meat. Uh, you hate yeah. to say it that way, but having meat that is raised natural is gourmet anymore. Really, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And and I, I mean, I would just want to say thank you because. <laughs> Thank grocery you. shopping in the store, like even now, I've always been the person that grocery shop. I mean, Dan goes, but he don't really pay attention to the prices or anything. He just throws what? <laughs> That's how guys are. They just throw I, in the yeah. car and you got to pay guy, for like, it if anyway. If you have right? a game show and you said milk costs a dollar or seven dollars, I'd be like, uh, uh, don't know. I'm gonna buy it. You're gonna drink. Yeah. <laughs> but lately, I've been shopping and I'm just like, I don't even know how families are affording to eat right now. I know now. Yeah. right now, especially yeah. yeah. So when I see these the the amazing prices that you're offering for such a great quality. We just, you know, as a podcast, as, yeah. as, um, fellow people who are, you know, have to eat, want to yeah, say yeah. thank you yeah. for doing thank that you. for the Indeed. community. I love what you guys are yeah. doing and we are definitely on board and, and I wish you, we miss, wish you so much more continued success. Yeah, thank I, you, I thank think you. it goes without saying you're going to have it, but, uh, yeah, it's a great it. story and started it's from, such you know, so, story. so recently that you started yeah. and it seems like it's really taken off. And the community anything, is uh, backing you. Yes, yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't do it without our supporters and customers. Yeah, so they're the ones that keep us going. But it's sure. like it sells. It's you know you get those people because they've met you, they've tried the food, and um, if there's anything else we could ever do for you, please let us know. But yeah, we thank you. We yep. appreciate you yep. coming. Good on. people, good product. Yeah. You're, you're going to be a success. <laughs> yes. so thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Yeah, that's awesome. And I really do want to sit down tonight and pick some stuff out. And yeah. I mean, I would love to get it at the market. But I don't know when you're going to have what you're going to have. Yeah, so, yeah, you um, probably got to get there first. Early. <laughs> um, get, yeah, right, we this, just Brandon's restocked. Like, this him. is what I got left. Oh, did you just restock? <laughs> Today we just picked up from the processor our beef pork, and we actually for the first time ever picked up some lamb as well, which is 100 percent crest finish. Oh, you love lamb chops too. I just love them so much. Um, we're going to put a link in the show notes, but people can find you and order all that stuff at tribalfamily.org. Yes, sir. Right. Very nice. Perfect. Awesome. Tribal well, thanks family. again. Yeah. All right. Now, Dan has a little something to say, because I still don't remember the <laughs> website. One of these but, days. But, you know, we are, you know. You build it up for me. How about that? You're doing you know, great we job. are we are turning our podcast finally into a business that's happening this year. You know, that's we're awesome. working Congrats. on it. Thank um, you. But one of the things that we held off for so long doing was starting a Patreon which we should have just done earlier in the thing, but we finally yeah. started a Patreon. So if you would like to help support the the show, go what do, to <laughs> what do you think? It, what do you think the website would be? Knowing it's going to be patreon dot com slash fine and dangy. That's it. I did it. <laughs> Look at that. Got it's it. a slash like this. <laughs> I don't know what that's so, called, but it's like this. I'm going to have it on the wall right here when you say it anyway. So there you go. Look right there. There you go. <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much for sitting with us. And yes, we're excited you. for when we can actually come out to the farm when you yes. have your store there and everything, but we'll see you at the markets. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. It was really great being Welcome. here. So. You did great for your first time. Thank you. Yeah, I think you did great anyway. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, guys. Remember, at the end of each and every day, it's, it's all fine and dandy. dandy.